What's up, Singapore? It's the most must-see WWE superstar of all time, The Miz, and you are listening to the guys on 938 Live Sports, and it is awesome. From 938 Live. This is Formula One driver Fernando Alonso. Hi, Singapore. I'm Jürgen Klinsmann. Hi, I'm Martin Tyler. This is Annika Sorenstein. Hi, Singapore. This is Johnny Wilkson. You're locked on to the best, best in sports. sports. Cheers. You're listening to Singapore's longest-running and only sports talk show on radio, 15 years and still going strong. A good Saturday to you and welcome to Sports Zone on 93 Live. I'm Raj Kumar and today we turn the spotlight on professional wrestling as the WWE or World Wrestling Entertainment is only one day away from celebrating the 30th anniversary of its biggest annual event, which is known as WrestleMania. This was, of course, the brainchild of Vince McMahon, who's the owner and the chairman of the WWE when he started the first WrestleMania in New York in 1985. That single moment in Madison Square Garden totally revolutionized the sport of wrestling and tomorrow 70,000 fans will jam-pack the Mercedes Superdome in Louis in Louisiana New Orleans while more than a hundred million will be watching the four-hour extravaganza on live television worldwide and we know that at least five Singaporeans uh, will be in the Superdome tomorrow as well I think they spent around four thousand dollars each for accommodation for flights for tickets etc et uh, meanwhile we'll also be giving away three sets of prizes for our phone-in contest each set is worth at least $250 and it contains ex- exclusive WrestleMania 30 merchandise like a bag, a hood, a shirt, a pouch, plus a, a PS3 copy of uh, the WWE 2K14 video game. So we have three sets, all of this cool stuff uh, courtesy of our friends from 2K Sports, the WWE, StarHub and 938 Live. You'll also get to hear from our, from our exclusive interview with the must-see WWE superstar The Miz. And we'll be taking your, call, your calls as well so that you can predict who's going to win tomorrow at WrestleMania 30. WrestleMania 30 in Singapore, of course, can only be seen on StarHub's Demand TV platform for a small subscription fee from Monday night onwards at 10 p.m. Okay then, joining me on the show today are three local WWE fans. First up, uh, we have Jonathan Toyard, who's one of our resident experts on video gaming. He's back on SportZone. Uh, John John was on the show about uh, three weeks ago, uh, and, and he's from uh, e27.co. Now, what's the latest uh, that's been happening at e27.co, Jonathan? Well, we have actually an event called Echelon that's coming up yeah. in June 10-11. It's basically a gathering of all startups and all entrepreneurs who actually began their life as a startup group. So it's all everyone gathering up. We haven't decided it's going to be happening in Singapore. It's going to be a big event, mm-hmm. like I said before, June 10 to 11th. If you want more information on all how, the, how, how it all settles and everything, just check out e27.co. A quick word on what e27.co is. Oh, it's actually it's a site just about startups and uh, tech stuff here and there. I actually was hired to actually handle the gaming columns, so I've been filling up, working on the site for about a month or so, and so far it's looking pretty good. Yeah, and it's probably a dream job. I mean, having to play and review video games for, for a career. Oh, it is, it is. It's a tough job. You even have to work at weekends, but still, the payoff is still pretty big. Yeah, really tough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jonathan, when did you start following pro wrestling and who is your favourite wrestler of all time? Okay, when I started, I believe it was my grandfather who introduced me to it, my late grandfather. He he used to watch it back in the late 80s and early 90s when the WCW and the WWE were still locking heads with, mm. with each other. It was known as WCW back then. Yeah. Or, N- or NWA, the yeah, National yeah, Wrestling yeah, pretty Alliance. Much, pretty yeah. much. Now, the thing is, um, I only got it, like, I was watching it casually just to bond with my grandfather, but I really got into the sport when the Attitude Era happened around the late, late 90s. Mm. And that was when Stone Cold, The Rock, Mankind, and uh, Undertaker, all that, and even Kane as well, and DX, that mm. all get me all hyped up just to watch all the matches when everything at the time was still like, all shoots were very all improv-like, so they were just re- not reading off scripts or anything. They were all doing it by themselves, at lib It was so impressive at the time. And the fighting's good too. So, <laughs> and the fighting, <laughs> oh, the fighting is last. Yes. So, <laughs> favourite wrestler of all time? Oh, Eddie Guerrero, without a doubt. Yeah. I love how the way he acts everything back in the WCW days, um, yeah. as well as when he joined the WWE when he had the whole uh, Latino heat sp- spiel going on. And his frog splash and his uh, athleticism is all really good, all unparalleled. Bar none, the best. That's right. The me. late great Eddie Guerrero, yep. Viva La Raza. Yep. Uh, our second guest uh, in the studio uh, is a sports writer. Now he's uh, doing. Now he's working with a fishing magazine. You want to say something about the magazine? Well, basically, the fishing magazine is called Hooked, and what we do is we do lifestyle, we do a lot of water sports, and fishing is basically one of the most relaxing things you can ever do in life, if you ask me. <laughs> 
Okay. <laughs> of course, I'm speaking to Sadat Osman. Uh, he, and you got to shake the hand of uh, WWE Hall of Famer Booker T when he was in town seven months ago. Sadat, uh, when when did you get hooked on to, uh, to pro wrestling? Well, I would say that would be sometime around the 1990s or 1991 when the first match I ever watched was the Ultimate Warrior vs. Hulk Hogan. That was uh, WrestleMania 6. Yes, that was right. Yeah, that was the, yeah. the Intercontinental title as well as the, the, the WWE heavyweight. title at that time. And that was the first match I watched with my uncle. Mm. And that was the start. Wow, you you actually watched the final and that was yeah you, that, you was know, that, was, that was the selling point for Fantastic. Yeah. Who yeah. were you rooting for? Warrior. You would, okay, mm-hmm. I was rooting for the Hulk stuff. Obviously. <laughs> uh, so, is that your favorite wrestling match of all time, and why? No, I wouldn't say that's my favorite wrestling match. For me, after Warrior left, after Hogan left, for me it was Shawn Michaels. So, then came the Iron Man match at WrestleMania 12. Yes, yes. that was brilliant. I mean, who would have thought? 60 minutes. Bret Hart and Shawn, Shawn Michaels. Michaels. Yes, and then my favorite guy won the title. So that was that was the best match for me. Who do you hate most in the industry? John Cena. Very really? <laughs> yes, I don't wow. like that guy. Wow. You want to know okay. why? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Basically, I think that he's too much of a goody two shoes kind of guy for, to be a wrestler. Yeah. I mean, you want to be a wrestler, you got to be a bit bad, a bit crass, you know. Stand out. You shouldn't be too nice. But he's had his moments. I mean, he did. Yeah. He when did. he was a bad guy, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was when, even when wearing he was the rapper. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was good. And then he became a good boy and then like, ah, uh, nah, enough. But the company needed a, a face, yeah, you know. know the, to I, market I know and, the reason, yeah, but I still the marketing. Like okay, our third guest is making his sports zone debut today. Uh, he's a PhD student at the moment. His name is Sean Pay. Uh, I met Sean at the Booker T shopping mall appearance at Bookers Plus, uh, together with more than a thousand other WWE fans who were screaming from four stories high. If you recall, Sean, uh, w- was that your first time meeting a WWE superstar? Uh, actually. I had the opportunity to uh, meet several WWE superstars over the years. Wow, uh, okay. The first one was uh, Mick Foley when he came to Singapore to promote his uh, first book, mm. Have a Nice Day. <laughs> so that was back in uh, 2000, 1999 to 2000 at Borders. Yeah. Okay, the, then after that, I had the opportunity to meet uh, the Basham Brothers and their manager, Shaniqua. Nice. At the backstage uh, session. Mm-hmm. And then now uh, I can finally add Booker T into my list of uh, wrestlers, you know, uh, who I can meet up close and personal. So when did you start uh, watching pro wrestling? I started watching when I was seven. Basically, it was my father who introduced it you know, to us, uh, growing up in a family full of boys. Mm. So the TV was on every Saturday and then we started watching the matches. So I would say we, I started very young. Favorite WWE champion of all time? Um... Okay, a lot of a lot of great champions in the past. You look at Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels, and all that. Um, Stone Cold, Stone Cold, The, the Rock. Rock. Yeah, yeah. But to me, uh, Bret the Hitman Hart is my favorite champion of all time. I can relate to that, and you're wearing the colors of Bret Hart today as well. And uh, today also happens to be your wedding anniversary. So uh, a a quick shout out to the wife. Uh, <laughs> you want to say something to your wife? Yeah, hi. Uh, happy anniversary to you, uh, baby. Uh, What's her name? Jing Er. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. We have Sean, Sadat, and Jonathan as our panel of WWE fans on the show. Uh, now, before we talk about the big one tomorrow, WrestleMania, let's talk briefly of what's happening tonight. And that is uh, the customary WWE Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Jon- Jonathan, the ultimate warrior, is finally being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Would you say this is long overdue? Oh, yes, it is. And also a bit surprising considering that Vince McMahon, he's not really good at holding a grudge against the what's that, the ultimate warrior ever since he left. Yeah. But at the same time, it's fu- it's nice to actually see him get his respect and due after doing a bunch of seminars here and there and also legally changing his name to the ultimate warrior. Exactly, yeah. Um, I'm did- also actually surprised that uh, who, the person who's going to induct him, introduce him, is actually Linda McMahon. I was actually expecting... You, uh, what oh, that- you already know who's... In- Have they announced it? No, no, no. They, oh. He said on Twitter, apparently, oh, that okay. uh, Linda McMahon is going to be the one to induct him, like, introduce. But I kind of figured how Hogan would be the one because he had legendary matches with the guys. So it's a bit odd. Exactly. Hmm. Linda McMahon, uh, who is the wife of uh, Vince, Vince McMahon, McMahon yeah. the father, of course, of Stephanie and Shane. Uh, Sean, Razor Ramon, uh, also known as Scott Hall, uh, is also being inducted tonight. Is he a surprise inclusion considering that he spent most of his wrestling c- career outside of the WWE? 
Uh, not really, because uh, I was kind of hoping for him to be inducted earlier, actually. Mm. Because although he spent uh, much of his uh, wrestling career outside of WWE, I would say that he had a very successful run with the company uh, with some very high-profile matches. We are looking at the first four-time Intercontinental Champion. Mm. All right? And then, uh, of course, uh, one of those matches which come to mind would be the ladder match against Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 10. Mm. So that was uh, totally groundbreaking and uh, a pioneer of the ladder match. You know, both of them were pioneers of the ladder match. So that match set the standard for the ladder matches of today. The tables, ladders and chairs matches As of well, today. Yes. Of course, oozing machismo, Razor Ramon, yeah. uh, the bad guy. Uh, who do you think will be the person to, uh, to induct him? I would have to say that uh, the person inducting him will be one of the members of his clique. So I'm going with either Kevin Nash Diesel or probably Shawn Michaels. I... I will agree with you on that. Uh, Sadat, we'll also see Jake the Snake Roberts in the Hall of Fame tonight. What do you think of uh, his elevation to legendary status? I mean, I think it's a good thing for that guy because he's not been winning titles during his run, but he has been part of so many interesting and exciting matches involving The Undertaker and uh, even Jerry Lawler at times. Mm. So I would say... Even The Warrior as well. Exactly, yes. So uh, the snake thing really made it for him. It made it big. Damien. Yes, yeah, Damien, that's right. Yeah. That's the name of the snake. And then mm. I would say he was also the one who kick-started the Attitude Era together with Stone Cold when he came back as the guy who was very religious, I would say. <laughs> oh, and the then, 316. Yes, and then he was saying John 316 that and then Austin came in and said Austin 316 <laughs> says I just, you know the yeah, rest. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that was one of the epic moments in WWE history for me. Jake the Snake was also in Singapore if I recall in 1992 or 1993 he was at the Singapore Zoo my dad my my brother and myself we all went down there were about 100 people who stopped him we met him uh, took photos with him uh, it was and that was like 20 uh, yeah about 20 years ago that uh, Jake the Snake was in town with uh, Diamond Dallas Page um, uh, now there are four more other individuals who will be inducted into the class of 2014 which also includes the late great Paul Barrow who was, who was of course uh, you know uh, the guy who brings out the urn uh, Undertaker for the manager, Undertaker, yeah. yeah, yeah, the Undertaker's manager. That's right. The WWE Divas Champion Lita and Mr. T, uh, Mr. T, of course, for his role in WrestleMania One and Two, and uh, the uh, the last guy, Sean, uh, the the father of uh, Carlito, uh, Carlos Colon. That's right. Uh, so these are the seven who will complete uh, the class of 2014. You're listening to SportsZone on 93 Live, and today we turn the spotlight on professional wrestling as we preview the WWE's WrestleMania 30. In the studio, in the studio with me are three local fans in Sadat Osman, Jonathan Toyard, and Sean Pay. Sean, we just talked about the Hall of Fame ceremony that is taking place today. Let's talk about the choice of the host of WrestleMania 30, and they went with only one man, Hulk Hogan. What do you make of the choice of the 60-year-old immortal? Fitting that they went with Hulk Hogan as the host this year. You know, he has a long re- uh, working relationship with the WWE and Vince, you know, dating more than 30 years. And he was also there at the first WrestleMania at the main event mm. uh, with uh, Mr. T. So you're looking at the biggest name in sports entertainment and the biggest event in sports entertainment. You know? So him hosting it, it doesn't get any bigger than that, brother. Of course, <laughs> the brother. <laughs> yeah, he. I mean, he's known for the brother. And uh, the fact that he went into movies as well... Uh, TV series and I think he set up the likes of uh, what uh, The Rock would have has gone on to do uh, John Cena they've also appeared in movies uh, Jonathan would you have preferred to see the Hulkster in the ring uh, with a microphone or in a match with another legend possibly you know say perhaps the Ultimate Warrior Ooh, as much as I like to see a legacy match I don't think his body's condition would be able to <laughs> handle doing another leg drop I've heard he's got a, like this if, it, if he can't even do his finisher without getting hurt really bad it's yeah. pretty tough but he's got good charisma on the mic and even on the announcer table. So I would love to... I think he's better off being at the back seat, but also being an MC for the entire match. 
but really, I would love to see him in a match, match but still, yeah, reality, reality and all that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then let's talk about one of the matches, uh, which is taking place at WrestleMania 30, and that's the 10-time WWE Champion John Cena going up against Bray Wyatt. Uh, we all know the history of the Wyatt family and how they provoked Cena and ruined his chances of winning the title at the last pay-per-view, which was uh, the Elimination Chamber. So Cena, after all of that has been through, has challenged Bray Wyatt. And here's uh, The Miz with his thoughts on that particular match. You know, I beat John Cena at WrestleMania 27. I know what it takes to actually go up against John Cena uh, at the granddaddy of the mall. And Bray Wyatt has another thing coming, man. He's, he's never had a WrestleMania match. And even though this guy, Ray Wyatt, is new, he's, uh, he's kind of uh, he's one of those people that you really don't know where he's coming from or what is going on. He's different. He's strange. People have said he's weird. The whole family is. Uh, you know, Cena's got to watch out, not just for Bray, but he's also got, you know, Luke Harker and Rowan, you know, out there probably as well to watch out for. So it's almost like three on one. And, you know, Cena might have a, a bit of a problem with a guy like Bray Wyatt. And that was WWE superstar The Miz speaking to 9th Real Life Sports exclusively. Now, Sadat, uh, will the buzzards prevail in their very first WrestleMania match, or will John Cena's arm be raised in victory? Are you? I'm asking the wrong person, man. You, <laughs> you gonna? Well, I mean, John Cena, he's he's good. He's got strength to beat really big guys, and I'm quite sure there's a way that he can beat three of them. But somehow, I but, think. But, but it's not the three of them. It's him and Bray Wyatt. I know, only. correct, yeah. correct. But they are gonna be there anyway. Yeah, the yeah. So it will. I think it's gonna be like okay, John's gonna be close to winning, and then the lights gonna go out, and then oh. Follow the buzzers, it's going to come out, and then yes, Cena's down and out. Bray's going to win it. Yeah, you can imagine 70,000 screaming fans, the lights will go out when uh, Bray Wyatt says, uh, uh, New Orleans, we are here. And yeah. then the whole stadium goes into darkness. Ding, ding, I won't ding, be ding. surprised if he becomes one of the fan favorites soon enough. Exactly, yeah. Uh, anyone in the studio disagrees with uh, the prediction made by Sadat? You said that you're picking... I'm picking Bray to win it. Bray to win. Anybody... Well, John? in a way, if, if, let's just say, the WWE decides that John Cena should win, his character should at least change because Bray Wyatt has always been a psychological kind of fighter. If all the matches they've been doing leading up to WrestleMania, hmm. there could be a psychological change. Maybe even John Cena might be a different person after the fight, maybe. So I would like to see him go from a clean-cut character to something a bit more... He's more rage inducive and all that in the future. So I would like to see that character change in John Cena, break away from this goody-two-shoes mold. Sean, uh, who do you pick for this match? I actually agree with Sadat. You know, uh, although uh, John Cena is a favorite to win the the, the match, mm. but I think Bray Wyatt and his uh, companions, you know, they have momentum coming into the WrestleMania match. Mm. So, uh, I'm saying Bray Wyatt will go over John Cena at WrestleMania. Wow. Okay. I'm. The fact that John Cena won last year when he beat The Rock for the championship, I think John is going to lose this one because they probably will need to propel, like you say, Bray Wyatt in his first WrestleMania. You know, he you never know. The beginner's luck. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, we have time very quickly to chat about the first ever 30 men Andre the Giant Battle Royal. Uh, of course, 30 WWE superstars will be competing in the Battle Royal for the first time at WrestleMania. Sean, who is your pick for the final two in the ring? Okay, I understand that there are three uh, unannounced superstars in this match. Mm. So I'm going to guess uh, maybe the Ultimate Warrior will make an in-ring comeback. <laughs> Hopefully, I hope to see him in the ring. Yeah. And probably the other person left standing in the ring will be the Big Show. You the know? Big Show? Yeah, okay. because there's so many comparisons between him and Andre the Giant. So he has a, a point to prove right there. The Miz did say, when, when I spoke to him, he did say that he's the Big Show has never won the Battle Royals. So, nev- so did uh, the, the great Carly or even uh, Mark Henry. The big guys have never won it. And in- instead, they are all big targets. Um, Sadat, do you agree that uh, they will try and take out the Big Show or is the Big Show going to be in the final two? I, I would say he will be in the final two because after all, Andre the Giant is just like a, an old version of the Big Show. And yeah, the Miz is right. I mean, the big guys will always be the targets. Mm-hmm. But somehow, you know, like people like Kane, the big show, they will do whatever it takes to throw the guys out of the ring. Okay. And uh, Jonathan, do you think, uh, who, who's your pick for the final two? Well, actually, I'll have to go with Sean's answer. Maybe a surprise cameo from Ultimate Warrior and Big Show as well. Or even Mark Henry. I feel that those three guys, uh, Big Show and uh, Mark Henry, 
they've got I mean they're gonna get a lot of people assaulting them like Fandango Alberto Del Rio all that coming in but at the end of the day if it's an Andre the Giant kind of match it still needs to have that representation of Andre the Giant in spirit so I believe it's either Big Show or Mark Henry I'm happy either way I think Okay, Andre the Giant, of course, the eighth wonder of the world. My pick for the winner of the the thirty man battle royal is actually the Miz. Surprising, you know. <laughs> I mean, he's been doing quite a, uh, he's been provoking quite a few people of late uh, with the Hulkster. I think earlier this week, uh, I forgot who he provoked uh, in the ring, but uh, he. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ha- yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. but uh, yeah, my pick for is the must-see WWE superstar, The Miz. It's time for the news headlines, but when we return, it's your chance to win a WrestleMania 30 bag full of merchandise worth around $250 each. We have three bags to be given away. We'll also be taking your predictions on some of the key matches happening tomorrow. So stay tuned, because it's all happening on Sport Zone right here on 93 Live. Hey Singapore, this is WWE Superstar, the game Triple H, and you're listening to the best in sports on 938 Live. It's all about the game, and how you play it, all about control, and if you can take it, all about your death. Welcome back to part 2 of Sports Zone on 93 Live. I'm the Raj Man and I'm flying solo today. But I'm in, I'm in good company as we turn the spotlight on professional wrestling and we preview the WWE's WrestleMania 30. In the studio with me are three local fans in Sadat Osman, Jonathan Toyat and Sean Pei. Alright then, as promised, uh, it's time now to give away those three goodie bags of merchandise. Each set is worth at least $250 and it contains exclusive WrestleMania 30 merchandise like a bag, a shirt, a pouch plus a, a PS3 copy of the WWE 2K14 video game. Uh, Jonathan, you must have tried uh, the this particular game, uh, the WWE 2K14 game. I, For me personally, I think it's absolutely brilliant uh, to say the least. I mean, to be able to play the storylines and the matches dating back to WrestleMania 1, uh, it's, to- it's totally phenomenal, man. Oh, yes, yes. 30 years of WrestleMania mode is really good. It mm. was a good idea for them to promote it. And I especially like the, all the little details that they did for Macho Man Randy Savage, another late but great wrestler as well. Yeah. A little swagger and everything and the way he just moves around and speaks is really cool. But what also makes wrestle the, this latest uh, wrestling game, the recent one, is the customization mode. You can actually make up whichever characters you want from different stables, from even from the Japan circuit everything and have them fight all together with your friends mm. or even like post up like a recreation of the match except using the Wrestlemania game engine and putting it on YouTube like it's pretty cool I mean honestly there's so much customization you can do with all the characters here and there that's right the game was launched about 6 months ago The Rock is on the cover uh, I think the next one is going to probably be launched maybe another couple of months uh, it's going to be interesting to see who's, oh I can't wait actually yeah honestly. who's going to be on the cover so we have 3 sets of this all of this cool stuff uh, courtesy of our friends from 2K Sports the, w- the WWE Star Hub and of course 938 Live and if you have won prizes on Sport Zone in the last 4 weeks that means you, if you won prizes in the month of March in the month of March on this very show you cannot take part today so let's give the rest a chance alright call us at 66911938 and tell us the answer to this two part question so we are looking for two answers alright the question is in the WWE which superstar in the past or present is known as the Heartbreak Kid and which other superstar is known as the Viper once again which superstar is known in the past or present as the Heartbreak Kid and which other superstar is known as the Viper? If you are a fan of the WWE, this is a, a no-brainer. So call now at 66911938. You must give both the answers. 66911938. Okay, let's now talk about Triple H versus Daniel Bryan. Sean, the winner of this fight will be the third man uh, in the same ring with Batista and Randy Orton for the WWE World Heavyweight title. First off, how do you see uh, the fight between Daniel Bryan and the game going down? Oh, I see this is going to be a very intense fight between the two men. They've been feuding since uh, SummerSlam. Okay, Daniel Bryan trying his uh, best to prove that he can be the face of the company. And the game trying to prove Daniel Bryan wrong and also going on uh, to to take part in the, the championship match. The game, of course, the because game. now he's in uh, he's part of the authority yep. because he's the CEO of the company. Yes. Mm. Okay, but I think at the end of the day, when you know when the smoke clears, I would say Daniel Bryan will go over Triple H in this match. Okay, Sadat, 
if Daniel Bryan was to prevail over the Cerebral Assassin, do you think he has enough left in his tank, per se, uh, to go ahead to face the two strong opponents in Batista and Randy Orton? If you ask me, I don't want Daniel Bryan to win. Because <laughs> I think he's not a real good face to begin with. So, okay, if let's say he wins, I say he would have the chance to win it. Because he's one of those guys who took apart the the Wyatts. Yeah. But I mean, he tried very hard, but he failed. So, I, I mean, since it's a triple threat match, I mean, he has the chance to win it. But I don't want, I don't want him to win. No. You don't want, I don't want Daniel, Daniel Bryan, Bryan to win. win. Okay. Well, let's pause for a minute and hear from uh, what the, the WWE superstar The Miz had to say about this uh, specific fight. Yeah, that is, uh, you know, good for good for Daniel Bryan. You know, when I was a pro of his back in the NXT days, I would say around three or four years ago, uh, you know, I taught him everything he knows. And now you're looking at him, you know, being one of the biggest success stories in the WWE. And what a magical moment it would be if Daniel Bryan could take out not only Triple H, but Batista and Randy Orton to win the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at the biggest event of them all, WrestleMania, and just watching the entire audience, probably 90,000 strong, chanting yes, yes, yes. I mean, that would be an absolute moment for him. So I'm really rooting for him. Can he do it? You know what? It's going to be a tough, tough battle because Triple H is one of the uh, one of the best in the ring. And not only that, that's our boss, man. Like, he can do whatever he wants and whenever he wants. You know, to screw over Daniel Bryan, I mean, let's face it, he's done it time and time again, so what makes this any different? And in the showcase of the Immortals, you know, it's, it's one of those situations where he's not going to want to look stupid. So Daniel Bryan has a big, big, big uh, step in front of him. Uh, let's just hope he can actually uh, step up above it. And there was WWE superstar The Miz. And uh, Jonathan, uh, if Triple H was to beat Bryan and qualify for the triple threat uh, that would also be a classic match in itself because I think it will be the first time that we see uh, the three friends who used to be known as Evolution I mean you include Ric Flair as well but uh, the three members of Evolution fighting for the most decorated prize in the industry what do you reckon if Triple H were to beat Brian and go on to face Randy Orton who's known as the Viper and of course uh, you know uh, Batista who's known as uh, the Animal the reunion would be alright but that would be a pretty silly decision from WWE to let Triple H win in this case because you've seen the crowds you've seen all the matches Daniel Bryan has been like there's so much pop there's so much support for the little guy beating the big guy who's actually the CEO of the company for one thing I mean you know the big boss basically the authority and whatnot. Yeah. and plus Daniel Bryan needs this push much more than all these other three characters like but Dave, Batista has a movie career going with Guardians of the Galaxy coming out. Hmm. Uh, Randy Orton's already happy in the top top tier card. And Triple H, he's married into the business, so he doesn't really need the push at all. <laughs> if I say if they, if they don't push Daniel Bryan this way, this would be the dumbest decision WWE has done. In a slew of other dumb decisions they have made before <laughs> back then. Let's hear what The Miz had to say about this particular match, uh, especially with uh, Batista coming back uh, you know, after a four-year absence, does he have it enough uh, to actually take on Randy Orton and uh, you know, in the triple threat match? Whenever you have a guy that's that's been away for a while, uh, they can have one of two things: ring rust or a whole mode of new motivation to come in and just take over the WWE. And I think that's exactly what Batista wants to do. And so Randy Orton's going to have his hands full, not only with Batista but with either Triple H or Daniel Bryan. And I mean, you have to, whenever you're in a triple threat match, your head has to be on a swivel and you literally got to be looking over your shoulder at all costs because you never know where that other guy may come up and, and take you out. So they have to be absolutely careful and it's going to be a definite tough match and I'm excited to see which one comes out on top. Now, Miz, just before you go, it's been about 10 years since you first made your debut on WWE's Tough Enough. You did headline WrestleMania two years ago in Atlanta, you mentioned there, and you've also started doing movies like The Marine Part 3 and Scooby-Doo. You've got Miz TV as well. What else would you like to see yourself be involved in in your career with the WWE? It's funny, I get this question a lot. Um, you know, I've done everything there is to do in the WWE. I mean, whatever WWE needs a commentator, they put me in. Whatever they need a panelist, they put me in. Whatever they need a host... They put me in. Whenever they need a movie star, guess who they call? And guess when they need a main event WWE superstar in that ring? They put The Miz in there because they know I deliver each and every time. Now, what's next for The Miz? 
uh, to keep doing exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to be shooting another movie, Marine 4 Moving Target, uh, in uh, the upcoming month, as well as basically working my way to get to WrestleMania 31, where I can be in the actual main event. Because let's face it, that's every superstar's dream. You want that moment at WrestleMania. So what I see myself doing this year is winning the Andre the Giant Trophy and then going on to motivate myself to get into the main event of WrestleMania 31. Miss, on that note, thank you very much for speaking to us on 93 Live in Singapore. And I'm sure I speak for all the WW fans in Singapore. We wish you the very best at WrestleMania 30 and beyond. And congratulations as well on tying the knot with Maurice a few weeks ago in the Bahamas. And we hope to see you in Singapore real soon. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. And definitely check out WrestleMania 30. Uh, I believe uh, on your time, it's, uh, it's on Monday, April 7th. But definitely check it out going to be one of the the greatest shows you will ever see and you'll definitely take away memories that will last a lifetime the must wwe superstar the miz uh of course uh, that's right it's taking place on monday morning singapore time and you can catch it on star hubs uh, demand tv for a small subscription fee uh from 10 p.m onwards uh that's monday night 10 p.m uh we we yeah the Let's give a let's uh, announce the winners uh, of the contest that we asked you earlier. Uh, the question was in the WWE, which superstar in the past or present is known as the Heartbreak Kid, and which other superstar is known as the Viper? The answers, the obvious answers are Shawn Michaels and Randy Orton. All right, so congratulations to Andy Tan, Cheryl Tan, and Andrew Pang. Andy, Cheryl. And Andrew, congratulations! Uh, you just won for yourselves uh, a WrestleMania 30 merchandise, uh, you know, set worth about two hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, and you know, the prizes, of course, are courtesy of Two K Sports, the WWE, uh, StarHub, and Nine Three Eight Life. And that, of course, is the theme of The Undertaker. Of course, that's the modernized version of the theme. Uh, and we all know that the dead man, age 49, The Undertaker, unbeaten in 21 years at WrestleMania. It's not consecutive, but in the 21 editions of WrestleMania that he's competed, he has won every match. He puts that record on the line tomorrow against a man who seems to be possessed in wanting to bury The Undertaker once and for all. Sean, uh, is tomorrow the final day of reckoning for The Undertaker when he faces uh, Brock Lesnar, the Beast Incarnate? Okay, I'm actually looking forward to this match, actually. We are talking about the streak versus the beast. You know? So we will, we will see weapons, uh, near falls, spectacular moves, uh, reversals. And uh, basically, we're going to witness a war right here. But when the smoke clears and the dust has settled, I'm saying the legacy of the dead man, you know, his streak, it will remain intact. You're saying it's going to go to 22 and 0? Yes, 22 to 0. Wow. Jonathan? What must Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar do to beat The Undertaker? Pray. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, I do agree with Sean. I mean, um, the, um, there's no signs of Undertaker's actually retiring or, uh, retiring anytime soon. Yeah. And Brock Lesnar's already a big enough name that even if he lose, the match is still going to be very spectacular. Having said that... I mean, he's a former UFC heavyweight champion, Brock Lesnar. That Lester. helps too a lot. Yeah. That helps too a lot. But I guess the bigger question here is uh, how many tombstones will it take to take down Brock Lesnar? I would say four. Because it's the most powerful move that Undertaker has in his repertoire. And I know Brock Lesnar has the speed and the gal agility, but it's all about in-ring wisdom and Undertaker has it since his 40 plus year plus tenor and all that. Mm. So I'd say four tombstones it'll take to probably take down Brock Lesnar. He's Sada- that strong, honestly. Okay, four tombstones. Sadat, there are pretty strong rumours of the possible WWE debut of this legend who has never ever stepped in a WWE ring. Uh, WWE ring that is uh, his name of course is Sting rumours suggest that he might have a hand in the outcome of the clash between Brock and Taker what do you what do you think I think that Sting will not show up okay but but if he were to show up that will really make things a lot more interesting in the WWE especially if he tries to you know make Taker keep the streak but then again, if you make Taker lose the streak, that'll be even more interesting. That will set up another match in WrestleMania 31. Exactly. He might, he might want to uh, allow the streak to continue and then he be the one at WrestleMania yes. 31 next year That's to end right. the streak. And then what, what if Warrior decides to come around and say, hey, Sting, get out of my spotlight. You know, that'll be even more interesting then. 
Sounds cool. I mean, the Warrior is 54. Uh, the Undertaker is 49. Hulk Hogan is 60. So and I, they're all in good shape. Yeah, yeah Rick Flair. Rick Flair was still in the ring at 63 or 64 in a couple of years ago. Man, when yeah. I wish I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so once again around the table, Sarat, uh, the streak to end or to continue? The streak to continue. Uh, Sean, you said the streak to continue. Jonathan, continue. I still, I say it will continue. They are not going to let the WWE, the Undertaker's streak end at the hands of uh, Brock Lesnar. On that note, it's time for a quick traffic update. And when we return, it's your chance to call in at six six nine one one nine three eight. That's six six nine one one nine three eight, and tell us who you are rooting for at WrestleMania thirty. This is the only wrestling show. <laughs> in the whole year that you can get a chance to call in and talk about you know the WWE so are you rooting for John Cena Daniel Bryan Triple H Randy Orton Batista whoever call now at 66911938 we want to hear from you for now though it's time for traffic watch to all the WWE fans in Singapore this is WWE superstar Wade Barrett and you're cruising with the Raj man only on 938 live <laughs> Okay, we are in the final stretch of Sports Zone as we talk about uh, professional wrestling and we preview the WWE's WrestleMania 30. In the studio with me are three local fans in Sadat Osman, Jonathan Toyard, and Sean Pay. So six six nine one one nine three eight is the number for you to call if you want to talk about WrestleMania 30 or the WWE uh, as a whole. So Sean, another key battle to look out for is uh, the Shield versus Corporate Kane and uh, the New Age Outlaws. How do you see this one panning out? Okay, this is going to be a close uh, match as well because you're looking at uh, very great uh, past uh, tag team champions. Okay, but I'm predicting that Kane and the New Age Outlaws will get over, and this will probably be the match where the Shield will break up mm. and they will shine individually. You think the Shield will break up? Yeah. <laughs> why? Why? Why do you think this? Uh. I think that the company has been planting the seeds, you know, for the breakout of the show, and I think they want to push Roman Reigns mm. uh, as uh, one of the main event, uh, ev- main eventers, you know. Mm. So I see uh, this match as the turning point for the show, actually. Okay. Uh, does um, anyone in the panel feel the same way uh, that I do, as in thinking that, or as we both are thinking that Roman Reigns? Actually, has the makings of a future WWE heavyweight champion. Uh, champion Jonathan Fish. He does. I mean, I mean, he's got the build and the physique and everything. But I do feel this is probably one of those silly WWE decisions that may come true, given that Sean was right about the seeds being planted. Hmm. I think it's way too early for them to break up. Like, give them another year, like how the Hardy Boys win, but probably even longer. Hmm. But at the same time, you won't have the Shield without all those three together. But at the same time, uh, Seth Rollins and uh, Dean Ambrose, they would make a pretty good tag team pair, hopefully. Uh, Sarat, do you think uh, you agree with uh, Sean? This might be the end of uh, the Shield. I disagree on that point because I don't think they'll break up so soon. Hmm. I think what's better for the Shield to do is stay together, dominate together, yeah. win the World Heavyweight Title, win the tag team title, win all the titles there is, and do one sort of evolution kind of thing that they did back then. Yeah, yeah. Or DX for that matter. Win all the titles, keep it in the stable, and bring the Shield to new heights. That will be the best. But actually. is anyone in the studio here surprised that the New Age Outlaws actually came out of retirement after almost uh, 10 years or 12 years, actually went on to win the WWE Tag Team Belts, and uh, now they're back in WrestleMania? Anybody surprised? Or? Uh, not really. I mean, I believe Road Dog has been going around at TNA back then. I believe, mm. and then just decide, okay lah, why not just join up with Triple H and do the whole authority thing angle going on? So it's both basically like a reunion of friends. And it's not great, all that's missing. Is it's X-Files. a great marketing gimmick as well by exactly. the WWE. That we can't we can't <laughs> discount that. Yeah. Uh, Sarat, the WWE Women's Championship belt is up, also up for grabs, mm-hmm. uh, as the defending champion AJ Lee. Uh, she's putting her title on the line against thirteen. Other divas. Uh, this is the first ever Vicky Guerrero Invitational. So in total, that's 14 divas all in the ring at the same time, if I'm not mistaken, and only one fall for the win. I'm not sure how this is going to pan out. If all 14 of them and you pin one person or you pin AJ Lee for and you win the title, you can pin anyone apparently. Wow, that's what Vicky said on the last show on yeah. SmackDown. Yeah. So. So who do you, who's your money going to be on which uh, WWE diva? Uh, besides the fact that it's going to be really confusing, I think it's going to be fun to watch. I mean, a bunch of ladies just you know jumping around, <laughs> trying to do moves that really work. But then again, one person really stood out to me. You know, Naomi, one of the uh, Funkadactyls. Yeah, yeah. She yes. is awesome. I mean, she's like RVD and uh, Real Mysterio mixed together just to look like a woman. I mean, she's 
She's really good in the ring. Mm, mm. And if it's not Naomi, then maybe Tamina Snuka will take it. Tamina, yeah, her her right hand man, yeah, so uh, right, right hand, right -hand uh, woman. woman, yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's uh, either one of these two women. Sean, who do you think uh, your pick for the women's champion? I would say AJ Lee actually to retain I, it. Yeah, I think she she will retain the title. Uh, I mean, there's there's a lot of uh go action going on in the ring. So she being very sneaky and all that, and she's a smart competitor. So maybe she'll do a, a roll up out of nowhere and get away with the win. Jonathan? Oh, agree? I'll agree with Sadat on here right there. Um, Naomi, when I saw her fighting like the past few matches, especially uh, like last week's Raw, yeah. her, her kicks and everything is just so impactful. Like, Kudos for the WWE for giving the respect to these uh, divas to actually learn how to fight and all that. And so far, Naomi seems to be my top pick at the moment. Although the daughter of Jimmy Snuka would actually become a close second. Yeah, I, I have a weird feeling it could be one of the underdogs like uh, Summer... Summary, uh, summary. Summary, summary, yeah. Who's the, the valley of Fandango. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, that might be uh, cool, that might be cool. But I believe Naomi seems to prove her chops, basically. She's got the presence and the uh, fighting skills. Yeah, and or even the redhead. Um, what's her name? Eva Marie. Eva Marie, yeah. Uh, I think... I, I just have this weird feeling it's going to be one of the, the, the lesser-known divas who have yet to be pushed, you know, into the main... Uh, spotlight. That's so what I like about it. It's like uh, you don't you are surprised by the you can be surprised by the outcome. That's what okay. I like about it. Okay, one final big match that's happening tomorrow, and this is actually happening in the pre-show. Uh, the four hours. It's uh, so this is just before WrestleMania starts. It is uh, the WWE Tag Team Belt is on the line. This four-way battle is part of. Uh, we'll see the Usos versus Curtis Axel and Ryback versus the team of the Real Americans and Los Matadero's. Uh, who is going to win the tag team belts, Sean? Okay, uh, I think we are looking at four uh, talented teams. You know, you have the Usos, who is a very uh, dynamic team. You yeah. have Curtis Axel and Ryback, you know, the powerhouses. You have uh, the real Americans, the technical wrestlers. And of course, uh, Los Matadores, the high flyers as well. Mm. Uh, this is going to be a close call between the Usos and the real Americans. But I guess the Usos will hold on to their titles. So you don't think uh, the, anybody thinks that the Bull is going to make an appearance? The of course, the bull will <laughs> yeah. be there, but yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how the bull plays out. But I, I really want the uh, real Americans to win it. Hmm. I mean, they are, they are what a wrestler should be. Swagger and uh, uh, what's Cesaro. his name? Uh, Cesaro. Uh, Antonio Cesaro. Yeah, 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 Antonio Cesaro. Yeah. And the Cesaro swing. What is that? I mean, that. I mean, as simple as it is, the fans love it. I mean, yeah, that, that's gotta be it. Uh. Uh, yeah, I would love to see Cesaro apply the, the swing on uh, the, the bull. He'll go on for 30 rounds. Like that. <laughs> Jonathan, who do you think is going to win before we wrap up the show? I think the Usos will still remain the champions. I the think. Usos? Yeah, Usos. I believe I'm actually more towards like uh, either the Samoans or uh, high-flying wrestlers. So I'm hoping either the, at least the Usos or the Los Matadores will win because they seem to show a lot of dynam dynamicism in their whole uh, tag team outfits and everything. And hopefully the Usos can do the haka in the ring as opposed oh, yes. to doing it. Uh, if they win, the, the, they, they, they're able to retain the title. That'll so the cool. Uzos for the win and uh, Sean you said either the Uzos or the real Americans ah, and your pick Sadat you I said I want real Americans okay I think uh, I think uh, the real Americans will win it on that note a big thank you to our studio guests in Jonathan uh, Toyard Sadat Osman and Sean Pei. Uh, thanks to those of you who called in uh, to win the prizes and I hope uh, you've all enjoyed this once a year Sports Zone special on professional wrestling and remember that WrestleMania 30 in Singapore can only be seen on StarHub's Demand TV platform for a small subscription fee from this Monday night 10pm onwards. Till the next time, I'm the Rajman. This has been Sports Zone for 938 Live.